Hey guys, Tarek here. I'm about to sit with a couple of friends of mine that are in the cybersecurity domain uh, to do a podcast that they invited me to contribute to. And one of the topics that we will be discussing is how can students and professionals get into the cybersecurity domain and what are some of the challenges that they might face. So um, it was supposed to be a podcast where we're going to be doing just audio recording, but I thought it would be nice and fun to video record this so you will get to know me a little bit better and I can share this with you for the benefit of everybody. So I'm literally recording this using my phone, uh, but hopefully it will benefit you and it will give you some tips and some advice on how you can break into the cybersecurity domain, whether you are a fresh student or whether you are a professional who is wanting to change careers. All right, so we will be recording this in a moment and I will see you soon. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. This is the second segment of Strangers Pings, and we have Tarek, who's um, a 10-year uh, veteran in training in cybersecurity, who will shed some light on a lot of the pitfalls that uh, students and professionals seeking to join the cybersecurity profession. Um, so Tarek, you know, as I said, when fresh graduate graduates, um, you know, come out of the university and and looking to, you know, find a job, uh, obviously they don't have the experience. So it's it's kind of like catch twenty two. How do how do students um, overcome this? What, what what you know from your experience? What what do they go through? So in my experience, if you're coming out of university and starting a job search, you might be a little bit too late. You want to start working on this before you graduate. So try to get involved in something. There's a lot of like open projects, open source projects, like take OWASP, for example, OSSTM, etc. Try to contribute to these projects as much as you can, or maybe as little as you can. Like you could do something as simple as translating to a different language. Um, if you have the technical capabilities, maybe write a tool, publish something, publish an article. And these are the things that usually attract the attention of recruiters, but not only recruiters from an HR perspective, like people who are actually looking to hire somebody, right? So if I am looking to hire somebody now as an addition to my team, uh, the first thing I would do is I would look at their LinkedIn profile, see what they've been up to, what they've been doing, what kind of contributions they're making, what kind of questions they're asking. So you want to get active on this before you graduate. If you start working on this after you graduate, it's going to be a little bit of a while to build this momentum up to be able to get into the work. And, and if, my, if you don't mind me asking, so, you know, we had Anya on the last episode where she was talking about like HR. Do, do the students, when they apply to jobs, uh, do they feel that the HR are not looking at this sort of thing, you think? see the, the smile on my face yeah, because this is a very uh, sort of like um, common topic or a common question that a lot of students struggle with not to be fair not just students even professionals right and uh, the you cannot expect from HR to be as technical as the hiring managers or the hiring individuals right HR usually operate as a sort of screening process so they weed out what they think are people that are absolutely not fit for the job do they sometimes make mistakes? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but there are ways to basically either try to impress the HR or maybe even bypass HR completely, right? So you could reach out to the hiring managers, you could uh, reach out to people you know, you could network a little bit. Uh, these are all things that will help. Um, I know like from, if we're talking cybersecurity specifically and techies in particular, I know maybe we're not all, uh, you know, into socializing and maybe we prefer to sit behind a computer and code all the time or create projects and whatnot. But there's a very important element to getting a job if we're talking about careers and jobs, uh, which is networking, which is getting to know people. And not just to get in a job, even in your job, in your career, you wanna get to know your colleagues, you wanna get to know your managers, your managers' managers. This is how you get promoted. This is how, you know, um, you, you move up the ladder. So make sure that this does not get lost you don't just focus on technicalities you don't just focus on certificates uh, pay attention also to making relationships speaking of certificates what do you think of them okay so uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, see that's a very good question because students 
ask me this all the time. This is one of certificates uh, and prices ranging from, I don't know, ten fifteen dollars to six seven thousand yes. dollars, right? So they can get pretty pricey, especially if you're a student. Um, what I always tell my students is look at the country that you are based in, look at the jobs that you are after, what do they want? Look at, read the job descriptions, man. Like if you want to apply to become a pen tester and you are based out of Dubai, for example, what are HR or the hiring managers asking for? Are they asking for something like... 10 years of experience of AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> blockchain, right? <laughs> so, uh, in, in some regions in the world, for example, CAH is extremely popular. And yeah. other regions, nobody cares about CAH. They want some other certificates. So, don't go waste your time and money pursuing a certificate that's not going to make a difference in your career okay. search, right? Um, having said that, I am with training, I am with certificates, obviously, because they sort of speed up the process. Just pay attention, make sure that you're putting your time, effort, and money in the right place. And, you know, I, I just want to kind of add to what Tarek was saying, just for the audience. It, it, it's, it's, I know it's difficult for a lot of people that are thinking to jump on cybersecurity just for, for, the case of, uh, for the case of money, to make more money or whatever. But really, you have to love what you do. And the only way to love it is that you have to put your hands or get yourself in a situation where you're learning at the job. Um, that is, you know, find a client, find a job that you, may not pay you well, but you're exposed to so many technologies and so many, uh, uh, too many, uh, so many solutions um, that allows you to play with. And from there, you start to understand how the business runs and how enterprises work and of course we're just talking about supply chain attack where you become aware of certain uh, vectors that these attackers can um, uh, circumvent so um, uh, Jasim we, you know when when we're talking about like certificates and everything um, where do you see that the students drive like wh where do you think you know from your side of things well to be honest I think um, I don't if you want to ask me, um, I don't pay much attention to certificates. I'd rather see someone with a lot of experience, a lot of hands-on. Because unfortunately nowadays, okay, certificates like Talak said, they might add a value, they might add something to your CV, that you're probably someone who's aware and someone who wants <clears throat> to explore, wants to read, wants to you know do a lot of networking. But nowadays you see a lot of people who are just getting certificates for the sake of getting paid and when you put them in real life situations or real life you know cases they know nothing really yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you don't want that so i think yeah this is you know this is my opinion really when it comes to you know having certificates and um, unfortunately i did experience a lot of people that i worked with they have some 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 of the best certificates you know from from a lot of well-known cyber uh cyber academies and cyber institutes but when it, whenever it comes to a case or dealing with a case, it just it just seems like they're lost when you're asking mm -hmm. them questions like, "So, how did you get your certificate?" <laughs> <laughs> and not just one, you know, several yeah. of them, and you're like, "And how old are you again?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, speaking of that, actually, so what drives students? Going back to Tata, what drives students? What from from the the students that you've asked and trained and and. Um, uh, coerced, <laughs> mentored rather. Um, what do you think the students? You know, what 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 is their spark? What do, what do you see? What kind of sparks do they have? So, if we're talking about the, what drives students to get into cyber, is completely different from what sparks students have, right? So, what drives students into cyber or getting into cyber security is pretty much what influences anybody really, like what they see on TV, what their friends talk about, what they see in social media, etc people talking about cool hacks for example and then everybody thinks yeah i want to become a hacker i want to become a pen tester yeah, right? like mr robot Miss, yeah exactly <laughs> right? exactly so yeah. people see that on tv and they think you know hacking is like i'm in so this is what drives students and there's by the way a lot of drive in that sense so i, I speak uh, with universities all the time and i work with them closely and I hear that a lot, like they're trying to sort of shoo students away from cybersecurity. They don't have they don't have any more places in the classroom. 
But when it comes to the spike, this is an extremely important question. And this is what really keeps the student motivated. And it all goes back to what the student enjoys doing, right? Don't do something because this is the trend. Don't do something because, you know... Because the, the teacher tells you to. The yeah. teacher, your friends, your parents, this is what you see on Twitter. And by the way, this is extremely distracting. Like you might, for example, let's say you enjoy, I don't know, uh, mobile pen testing. And then you see now everybody talking about bug hunting, uh, web bug hunting. And then you're thinking, oh, maybe I should get into web. Don't do that. Yes. If you're enjoying mobile, stick to mobile. Stick to mobile. You know? Know? There, there will be a time that someone's going to need you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, Absolutely. That's a great yeah. point, Tari. You know, we, we, you and I had this discussion a while back where, you know, 10 years ago, it was called IT admin. Yeah. Or you know, 20 years ago, it's called IT admin. And now there's niche. There's niche disciplines and domains of, of specialities that, like, you can be an expert in just XSS. Yeah. Like Absolutely. literally, like you can just be the hardcore exercise uh, uh, guru. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can make money out of it and bug uh, bounties or, you know. Write articles. Uh, and There are literally books on just SQL injection or books on exercise. Oh, yeah. Like a whole book, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, you can. Uh, and this is where you would start to shine. But here's what is extremely important for students. If we're talking to students here to realize is that this is not going to happen overnight and this is not going to happen the second you step out of university. Absolutely. This comes with a lot of experience. You know, it might take you a few years to get to that point. Right. So you need to be patient. You need to be really patient. And this, this is what goes back to the consistency. Stick to what you're enjoying. Try not to deviate. Eventually, you will get there. Um, on the topic of universities, you know, like getting students getting trained and stuff, or even professionals uh, that want, you know, go back to kind of think that, you know, uh, getting a master's in information security can help them achieve the next level of, of their job. Um, what do you think? Is, is, is the universities and the colleges not particularly in the in the region, but all around the world? Do, do, do you, like, what do you see is the the pitfalls here versus the one uh, versus the outside world? So uh, I did my master's in the outside world. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it here. So my benchmark of comparison is, might be a bit dated because I did it about 15 years ago. <laughs> um, but here's, here's my take on master's degrees, for example, and uh, bachelor's degrees. From what I discussed with my friends here that just graduated recently as well, most universities try to expose you to as many things as possible in the shortest time possible, right? So you have a year, you get to learn a little bit about forensics, a little bit about networking, a little bit about pen testing, a little bit about this and that in the hope that you're gonna pick one and run with it yeah. okay so don't go into university expecting to come back uh, or come out excuse me after two or three years as an expert yeah you, you need to get a little bit of know-how of bits and pieces and then pick something to focus on okay Tarek, what do you think are the challenges the student facing right now in the cyber domain i mean what 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 kind of struggle what kind of you know, what do they fail to understand when it comes to cyber? So that, that's a tricky one. And mm -hmm. I think it goes back to the previous question. It's expectations, right? Mm -hmm. You go into university, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of money. You're expecting by the end of it, after four years, five years to come out mm -hmm. with a job, with a lot of know-how. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Universities try to prepare you to get a little bit of understanding of every let's call it like a jack of all trades yes. but a master of none right um so there's a lot of legwork that needs to be done mm -hmm. students need to do and invest a lot in themselves and this is what we were mentioning the first question make sure that you start working on yourself at university extracurricularly so prepare read contribute network mm -hmm. etc uh, and be prepared to do a lot of hard work Cybersecurity looks glamorous because this is what we see in social media, right? Yeah, unfortunately. You know, I did this hack, I did that hack. But what yeah. a lot of people fail to understand is there's a lot of other things oh, yeah, happening. A lot of things. And it's just not a one-man thing, actually. It's yeah, not. Yeah. It's, it's not. not. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Do you think as professionals, uh, do we owe it to ourselves to make sure the next generations fall into line? Should we go out there to schools and tell them, hey, listen, I'm willing to offer 30 minutes of my time to answer questions that people uh, that these students have looking to absolutely man i mean this is what i do 
um, at every chance that I get. I try to train students, I do mentorship programs. It's not always advertised and I don't always talk about it in social media, but I try to work with students, with universities, etc. And I wish there are more uh, professionals that do that because they come in with the real perspective, you know? Uh, let's say pen testing because that was my specialty. It sounds super fancy, but what a lot of people fail to understand is you need to understand RFPs, you need to understand how to write a report, you need yeah. to understand how to present to the customer, how to scope, how to manage projects, how to manage resources. It's not just about you know sitting behind a computer and getting shells. Well, this is the problem. A lot of people think like this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because they're not exposed to the reality, right? And this is where people like you, myself, and Jason have to step in and step up and explain the real world to, to the students that are up and coming. Absolutely, totally agree. Well, that wraps up our second segment. Thank you everyone for listening in. Thank you, Jasm. Thank you, Tarek. Thank, thank you, Rami. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. And everyone, thank you. Be safe. 